So right off the bat, the most effective anti-aging you can use in your skin is and has been for the past 50 years, sunscreen. If you'd like to know why and how, stay tuned. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Devon Ford, I'm a cosmetic chemist, and today's video is all about the myths, the facts, and the shade on anti-aging skincare creams and sunscreen. But I decided to create this video in particular because uh, for the past like three to four years, I've had older women and young women come up to me and saying, oh, Javon, can you make me some anti-aging cream? And the first thing I ask is, do you wear sunscreen? If the answer is no, I just look and tell them, that's where you start. The biggest cause of aging, premature signs of aging, visible signs of aging, wrinkles, sunspots, is the sun. I know you like to tan, it's still in vogue, unfortunately, but let's be honest, the sun ain't your friend, it don't like you. But you might say, but wait, 300, 400 years ago, my ancestors didn't use sunscreen and they aged just fine. If you're white, 300 and 400 years ago, your ancestors were most likely in the Northern Hemisphere in Europe, where, you know, the sun is rarely in direct line because it's not close to the equator. So you're in America now or in Australia or closer to the equator now, that's not really an option. Even if you're of African descent, 300, 400 years ago, the ozone layer didn't have a gaping hole. Since the 70s, you're exposed to even more UV light than you would have been 300, 400 years ago. So yes, I don't care how dark or how light you are, you need sunscreen. So first, you need to understand there are like three types of UV rays. UVA, UVB, UVC. We don't really talk about UVC rays that much because they don't really do much damage. UVB rays are the ones responsible for sunburn, and UVA rays are the ones responsible for melanoma, other forms of skin cancer, age spots, wrinkles, pretty much everything. And they're also the ones responsible for tanning. So when you're in the tanning bed, you're really getting hit with all those nice UVA rays that are aging your skin, increasing your likelihood of cancer, but that's that's another topic. We're just talking about skincare today. It's well understood that the main cause of aging, at least the visible signs of aging, is the sun, UV rays. And so the way to combat that is with sunscreen. Now, 30 to 40 years ago, I would understand people not wanting to use sunscreen because it was, you know, thick and oily and usually left a white cast, especially on people of dark complexion like me. However, it's 2019. That's not really an excuse anymore because there are many brands like the one I personally use, Supergoop, that are lightweight, absorb quickly, don't leave a film, layer well under makeup and other cosmetics, and basically you don't even feel it. Plus, you know, even if it did, if you really are serious about anti-aging, at least something helps. However, not everything. So last week when I asked a friend who was, you know, building her uh, skincare routine, whether or not she used sunscreen, she was like, no, not yet. I'm using an SPF moisturizer. Pause. If you really want to get the SPF benefits, look at the moisturizer. It may be great as a moisturizer. It's not going to be so good as the SPF. A little bit of shade. What they don't tell you is about SPF, which stands for um, sun protection factor, whether it's 15, 30, 50, 70, whatever. Is that SPF is only a measure of UVB rays. As I stated earlier, UVB rays are the ones that cause sunburn. So great, you're protected against sunburn. However, you're not really protected against, you know, skin cancer and aging and photo spots, sunspots, because SPF only measures UVB. So how do you stop UVA rays? Well, you look for a sunscreen called broad spectrum, because broad spectrum means that it, you know, works across the board from UVA to UVC rays, protecting you for a limited amount of time against up to like 99% of sun rays. Speaking of percentages, if you have SPF over 50, you're wasting your money. So SPF 30 protects about 97% of sun rays, SPF 50 protects 98%, and SPF 100 protects 99%. Yeah, there's only like a one or 2% difference and you're never gonna get to 100% protection because nothing's perfect. So basically, if you're spending extra money on SPF 100, SPF 70, don't. Stop at SPF 50 or even SPF 30 because you're only missing 2%, and like I said, you're never going to get to 100% protection. This not only applies to moisturizers, this applies to makeup, moisturizers, toners, anything that claims to be an SPF but isn't labeled as a sunscreen is probably not enough SPF protection. Again, if it doesn't say broad spectrum, it's only protecting at best against sunburn, which, you know, if you're really caring about anti-aging, you're not really worried about sunburn anyways. Ah, another point. So anti-aging creams, uh, what do they do? Of course, anti-aging creams support to, you know, reverse the signs of aging by fading the appearances of fine lines and wrinkles. However, in reality, the best an anti-aging cream can do is fade the fine lines because fine lines are caused by dehydrated skin or they're exacerbated by, you know, dull, dehydrated, unmoisturized skin. So basically, anti-aging creams are really just 
really, really good moisturizers because they really do help fade the fine lines caused by dehydrated skin. However, wrinkles are caused by damage to collagen. The damage to collagen is caused by overexposure to UV light, which triggers free radicals that basically eat away the collagen in your skin. However, as a preventative method, you can use an anti-aging cream now to prevent further damage because a lot of them are formulated with antioxidants. The way antioxidants work is by basically preventing the oxidation of the collagen. So when a free radical comes down from the sun, the UV light, it reacts with your skin, basically oxidizing the collagen and destroying it, basically denaturing the protein. And over time, the more and more collagen that gets denatured damages the skin and eventually leads to wrinkles. If you already have wrinkles, antioxidants aren't really doing anything except for, you know, maybe preventing future damage. But again, if you're not wearing sunscreen, it's not doing that either. So it's pretty much just a marketing ingredient at that point. However, that does not mean uh, go and throw out your 100, 150, 200, 300 dollar uh, La Mer or whatever anti-aging cream you're using because, like I said, it's a really good moisturizer and anti-aging is two steps. Sun protection as well as keeping the skin moist and hydrated and full and supple. And anti-aging creams really are good at that. All right, now that you know the how and why you should wear sunscreen, let's now discuss, you know, your different options. There are two different types of sunscreens. You have the mineral, aka physical sunscreens, and then you have the chemical sunscreen. The physical sunscreens are also known as sunblock because they work by literally blocking the sun's rays from reaching the skin. In a similar way to how melanin works in darker complexioned people by absorbing the UV light. Whereas the chemical sunscreens work by reacting with the UV rays, neutralizing them before they can reach your skin. Because of this, chemical sunscreens are usually fickle. Physical sunscreens are based on oxides, titanium dioxide or zinc oxide. Their main drawback is that they can sometimes leave a white pigment because these are the same pigments used in foundation and other makeup to achieve a white color. Their benefit is that they're, you know, very nature friendly and usually harmless. Whereas the chemical sunscreens don't leave a cast at all, they're usually transparent, they're usually lighter. However, they can damage the coral reefs because Actually, in fact, Hawaii just two months ago has banned the use of the FDA approved chemical sunscreens because they are very damaging to aquatic life. So if you're going to go swimming, I don't recommend using a chemical sunscreen. Oh, another bit of tea. There are about seven to 10 other chemical sunscreens besides the ones currently used in the US that are approved in other countries like Europe and Korea. However, the FDA has yet to make a statement on their safety, so the can't be used here yet. We're limited to avobenzone, oxybenzone, and the other benzones, which we already know are damaging for the coral reefs. But again, it's not a problem if you're only going to use it on a daily basis and aren't going to go swimming in them in an the open ocean, because it'll just rinse right off down the drain with your usual oil cleanser to break it up, so it's not going to be that damaging to the environment. Another drawback of the chemical sunscreens, though, is that because it works via chemical reaction, it's very fickle and can sometimes be unstable. In general, you're supposed to wait 15 minutes before going out after applying sunscreen, but that's especially the case with the chemical sunscreens. Case in point, you won't find a single brand on the market that mixes the chemical and the physical sunscreens together. Why? It's because the chemical sunscreens don't react well to physical sunscreens. You can't mix oxy or avobenzone with zinc oxide or titanium dioxide. It will deactivate the sunscreen properties in the chemical sunscreens. So for that very same reason, if you plan on wearing makeup, I don't recommend you layering a chemical sunscreen underneath because whether it says so or not, all makeup, as far as foundation and blushes are concerned, are based on mineral pigments. And as I just stated, mineral pigments will deactivate the sunscreen properties in the chemical sunscreens. So instead, choose a physical sunscreen, even if it leaves a white cast, it won't be an issue if you're gonna layer on your foundational top. That way you can ensure you get the maximum possible SPF from that sunscreen. I hope today's video has been very informative, if not entertaining. If you have any questions, comments again, like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for coming to my TED Talk.